YouTube. Welcome back to the Allegheny Northern in N scale. And uh, I was, it's coming up in the middle of August here, and I realized that by the end of August, I'm not going to have nearly enough content to do an August update. Uh, August was vacation month, and it's been busy at work, and there's just, uh, there hasn't been a lot of time in the train room. So uh, this is actually the first time I've been in the train room in the month of, of August. Um, so it's, it's been a while. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I opted to, rather than skip the month for, for another video, uh, I'm going to build one of the Showcase Miniatures vehicles that I got uh, from the last, if you remember from the last video, uh, I think I showed you two of them. I, I forgot that there was uh, the stake bed attached to the, the back of the, the pumper truck. So um, I have three options here that I, that I can show you how to build. And what I want to do is just show you how I put together these metal kits. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the Showcase Miniatures vehicles. They're one of the only manufacturers that's putting out modern looking constru uh, vehicles, construction and otherwise in, in end scale, uh, unless you go 3D printing. So uh, I'm a big fan and uh, we have to decide which of these three we're going to we're gonna build here. So we've got the, uh, the pumper uh, and the stake bed. The stake bed's going to go with the, uh, uh, the lumber yard up on the upper level. And we've got the uh, the aerial ladder, hook and ladder truck. And this actually has options. You can build it either as you see it here in the travel position, or it actually has the uh, the outriggers extended as well, so you could build it build it that way. And uh, so we got to we got to pick one of these three. And uh, I don't know what you guys want to see, but uh, that's the one we're going to build. So stay tuned. Let me show you how we do it here. Okay, this kit has probably the most complicated instructions that I've ever seen on a Showcase Miniatures set, uh, which is interesting and, and fun. So a lot, lot going on here. And as you can see, we have some building options. So I thought about it and, you know, it, the truck looks impressive, whether it's in, in a travel position or whether it's, you know, a fighting a fire. But this to me is, is the way to go. So Looks like we're going to have a burning building somewhere on the layout at some point coming up because this is how we're building it. Okay, so I started disassembling the set here. Um, we have uh, these little foam pieces that come in with the, with the plastic case. Uh, I always save these. These are great for other projects, like when you're working on rolling stock or locomotives or something. It's a great either holder for pieces or, or to stop you from breaking pieces off. It's just, it's a very compressible foam. It's nothing fancy. It's just, they're, they're useful. So I keep those and uh, you can see the detail on these parts. Some of these are plastic. These are plastic. Um, the underframe of the truck is, is metal. Uh, there's metal parts here. And then of course there's, there's the photo etch pieces that make up the ladder and some of the other uh, assemblies here. So uh, lo lots to build here. And first things first, um, I've gone through the instructions. Uh, I've read kind of what they're what they're having us do here, and the next step that I'm going to take is to to prep all these pieces. So, for me, prepping simply means that these pieces all need a primer coat, and all of the metal, the plastic, the photo etch, what doesn't matter what part you're you're working on, they all need to be prepped. Otherwise, your paint's just not going to stick to it, and especially if you're using a lighter paint, say like a white or something, you'll just end up spraying coat after coat after coat on it and it's just not going to stick so um, definitely definitely prime them uh, the instructions usually tell you to to wash them um, in warm soapy water so we're going to go and do that and then we'll be right back the next thing i like to do is group my parts together and so for instance the tires the underside of the truck the axles these are all going to get painted black so i'm going to assemble these because i can spray paint these all at one time the body of the truck is going to be, you know, a fire engine red. So I can assemble this and spray paint this all at one time. Uh, and I'm still using the rattle can method. So for me, rather than wasting paint by constantly clearing out the nozzle, I try to group these things together so that I'm spraying all the items at the same time. The ladder assembly, uh, I am going to build it pretty much like they, sh they show here with a little bit of, little bit of variance. But uh, since the ladder is white, uh, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint those parts white. I'm going to spray paint the underside of the truck black, 
and then I'm going to spray paint the, the truck body itself red. Now, because I don't have a spray booth, I tend to use whatever I have around, and typically there is a uh, box from a model that I'm either building or have built that makes an excellent back uh, drop for spraying. In this case, I have a massive box. It's the Walters, it's the Union Station. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna use this box to be our spray booth. Okay, so here is my ghetto uh, spray booth. I, can you still say ghetto or is that, is that not appropriate? Redneck? Uh, that's probably not appropriate either. Here is my inner urban or rural spray booth um, that is perfect for what we're doing here. And so all I've done is I've taken these initial parts and I have spray painted them um, using uh, Tamiya Black. It's nothing crazy, just a rattle can. It's Tamiya Black. And uh, I've got the underside of the truck ready. I'm gonna let that dry uh, before I move those parts. Uh, and then I am going to paint the body of the truck and the uh, ladder pieces in a very similar fashion. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm gonna get that done. I don't think I need to show you how I spray paint. I think everybody at this point knows how a spray paint can works. In case you don't, take the cap off, give it a shake. Actually, you should shake it with the cap on, just good practice. You start off where the model isn't, get the spray going, and then you just travel in one direction across it. You can go back if you want, but make sure you always end your spray off of the piece you're painting so that you don't get a buildup of, of paint. So uh, you'll notice that I have paint pretty much all over the place, but it is contained within my um, somewhat engineered spray booth. Okay, so we're letting some parts dry. Fire truck is red. Ladder is white. Undercarriage is black. And they were all Tamiya paints. So it is black. This is called dull red. We're gonna see how dull it is. It may not be the final color. And then I went with this, it's a uh, racing white. So that's a TS7, a TS33, TS6, in case you are uh, gonna copy this. Uh, I went with the racing white because unlike the TS26, which is a pure white, it's not as white. And uh, I didn't want, this, this was too white. This didn't, this didn't, didn't look right to me, to the eye. So we went with a cream color. Uh, one thing I will tell you with these etched parts, they are very, very fine. So be careful as you're working with them, just like when we did the, the Thrall uh, five unit well car kit, um, the pieces are very, very, very brittle. So leave them on the sprue until you're ready to, to work with them. And then even after that point, just be very, very careful with them. And when you spray paint them, don't forget they have two sides and because they're so small, make sure you coat them really, really well. Otherwise you'll miss something and it'll look kind of stupid and then it's hard to go back and fix. And so just, just take your time and make sure you spray paint it uh, correctly the first time. Now, there are another sheet of etch metal parts. These are the doors that are gonna go on the side of the truck. And I, I'm a little unsure what I wanna do with them because the color that they are is almost the color that I want them. So these might get a spray paint uh, doll coat layer and be left alone. I haven't decided yet, but we have something else to work on in the meantime while I'm working on that. And that is right here. So these parts have dried. This, the spray paint doesn't take long to, to dry and we can start the assembly. Now I am using Gorilla Glue. This is the gel version. I've had a couple of different types. This one's okay. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's Gorilla Glue. I, I don't know what else to say to it, but it works very well. So camera shaking off hand, off camera. Uh, that's in my left hand here. I'm shaking the clue to mix it up. But this is what we're gonna use and simply follow the instructions here. So we are going to mount the underside of the, the axles here and then we're gonna put the tires on. After that, if we need to touch up paint, we can do it and then we're gonna get ready to place the body of the truck. So let's go ahead and assemble it. Okay, so we've given everything enough time to dry at this point. So we've got our fire truck body in red, and we have our assembled um, undercarriage 
it's all spray paint in black. You'll note that I didn't spray the top and that's because uh, I want to have a good bond here. Um, typically I would not have sprayed the inside of here where that's going to sit, but because I didn't want this to not be painted, I, I sprayed the inside. So it's better if you can get, you know, raw material and raw material. Now I did test fit this piece, so I know that this doesn't fit. Um, and what I did notice is there are some small nubs on the front and I'm just going to remove those with a pair of, uh, with a pair of cutters. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of Gorilla Glue to the bottom here and mount the two pieces. Okay, with our truck assembled, we have to start thinking about uh, how we're going to paint this thing out. Now, if you'll notice, there are things, I guess firefighting things, molded into the body of this. Now, we do have doors that go over here that we can either model on or off. And if you model them off, which would essentially be open, um, you would see all of these things. So there's a lot of detail there and it's on both sides. So I think it would be silly to put the doors on both sides, especially if we're in firefighting mode. So I'm going to model one side open and one side closed, which means all of these things need painted some different color. So we're gonna take a small brush and start painting some of these details on here now that the base coat is on. Okay, so coming back here, um, there is the inside of our truck painted. Um, the inside of the shelves is, are painted a, a steel color. And then the various items inside are painted um, tans and whites and blacks. And uh, they're not really in the shape of anything. They're more in the shape of just, you know, squares and circles. There's really nothing to find. So you can't really say that, oh, that's a box of this or that's a piece of that because it doesn't really match anything. And then the other thing that I did here was I, I painted the inside of the truck. So it's only got one coat on it. It needs another coat that's drying at the moment. But uh, the other thing that I did is I went back and I painted the truck a, a traffic light red metallic. It's an enamel paint. And, and the reason I did that was because the, the dull red was definitely dull. And fire trucks are, they're always bright colors, whether they are green or red or white, yellow, blue. I don't care what color they are. They're always very vibrant colors. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, the communities take great pride in, in their firefighting equipment. Um, so you'll, you're not going to see a dirty, rusted, in-use fire truck. They're always very well maintained. They're always a very sor yeah, source of, of pride for the community. So a dull red just doesn't really fit a fire truck. So uh, I, I painted the whole thing with this metallic paint. Um, it, everything's drying at the moment, so I'm, I'm not gonna move it around too much. But um, letting that dry, this looks a lot more reflective of what a, a fire truck should look like. And the other thing that I, that I was thinking about while I was doing this is, you know, uh, having to go back and second coat everything in paint you know, I was trying to determine what was good enough as far as being painted. And I, and I realized that a single coat wasn't going to do it. it. It has to be perfect. And the reason it has to be perfect is your viewer to the layout, especially if they're a first time viewer, they're going to be drawn to certain scenes on your layout. So a building on fire, maybe that's um, lit up, you know, if you've got the fire, you know, with LEDs flickering, um, and, and you put maybe some, some lights on this kit, which um, I have decided at some point I do need to light this kit so that the, um, the, the fire truck lights up. It's just, it has to happen. Um, I don't have the kits now, but uh, that's, that's going to be a future video, I guess. That, that's going to draw your viewer's attention to that scene. And the more um, attention they pay to it, the more time that they're going to have to see flaws in your work. So give it that extra coat of paint, take that extra bit of time, make sure it's right because a scene like this, a scene like a fire truck, everybody loves fire trucks. They're gonna see all those details and they're gonna spend a lot of time looking for those details. So give those details a reason to be seen. Take the time. With our red paint drying, it is time to turn our attention to another piece here and that is the actual ladder itself so 
these are etched metal pieces, and I'll be honest with you, um, they're, they're pretty flimsy, um, which is not surprising. So uh, there's going to be some uh, finesse here into getting these pieces. Uh, once they're cut, then you have to get them square to each other. So very carefully, I'm going to use a number 11 hobby knife to remove these pieces from the the ladder here or from the sprue and, and then what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions step by step so to this point i've sort of been using them as a guideline um, but for this uh, we're going to we're going to go exactly how they have it here and one point that i should make is they do give you this little bit of advice and that is how to do micro gluing it sits on the back here so this is worth noting and that is exactly the process we're going to follow in putting this together so i'm going to go ahead and cut these pieces free and then we're going to start the assembly okay now that i have the etched metal pieces removed from the sprue uh, you'll notice that i have them in three different piles and that's because they are there are three different sizes the biggest size here, it being the, the bottom, that'll be closest to the truck, the midpoint, and then the smallest point, which will be the, the highest point on the ladder, just like the, the real vehicle, these are telescopic, so they fit inside each other. So uh, you have a choice to make, because depending on how you uh, build this would depend on how many of these sections are extended on the ladder. Obviously, if the truck is, is in the travel position, then the ladder would just, all these pieces would be stacked inside each other and the, and the ladder would just be sitting on top of the truck. Uh, if you've got a structure of varying heights, pay special attention as to how these uh, si sections slide up. Uh, on most trucks, you know, you'll get, the, the first section will come up with the hydraulic. The, the second section will, will extend out and then the, the, you know the third section but there can be varying depending on how big the truck is and, and how it telescopes uh, there there may be various positions where you know half of it's extended and, and different things so take a look at some some pictures online before you build your kit to, to match your building um, for, for me uh, I want the full impressive view so I want this thing at full extension that's what she said so uh, we're gonna go ahead and build this thing all all the way all the way uh, all the way up here now one cool thing about this is they have given these pieces which are difficult to pick up little tabs and it's kind of hard to see here um, but there's little tabs here and then there are little um, receiving slots on the uh, the ladder base so that these pieces can can be put together this is where the micro gluing comes in so we're going to uh, insert these, these pieces into the ladder. We're going to apply just enough glue to let it wick into the joints. And then we're going to need to keep this at a 90 degree angle so that these uh, ladder doesn't look weird. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put this together. And then I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like assembled. And, and then we'll do the, the other pieces. Okay, I'm not saying this is the easiest way to do it, but this, this way seems to work for me. So... What I did is I actually built this thing upside down and I taped it together using small strips of drafting tape. And for those of you who don't know what this is, it's basically a, uh, it's a version of masking tape, but it was designed for when architects would use, um, say, vellum or trace paper. Um, it, uh, it would hold the drawing paper down uh, on top of each other or onto the drawing desk while they worked. So, um, back from my school days, I still have some of that left, and it was perfect for holding this upside down. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using a small piece of piano wire from another project. I'm putting a small amount of our Gorilla Glue on it, and I'm using that to basically glue these together um, and using the technique that they have on the drawing uh, set here and they're calling it micro gluing and what i'm doing is using capillary action to get the glue basically to flow into the parts and glue this thing together so it's not a lot that holds it together and you do have to make sure it's pretty square because once it's glued in place you're not going to really want to bend this thing around too much 
but I am going to do all three sections just like that. And like I said, that technique worked pretty well for me. So um, this is, you could don't, if you don't have drafting tape, I mean, there's, there's plenty of other tapes, something that you can peel off uh, painter's tape or something, cut into strips, and you can just simply remove it when you're done. Okay, so I am uh, starting to assemble the, the, the ladder assembly. And it's very important that all of these pieces are, are straight and flat because that's how it is in the real world. So once I glued them together, I noticed there was a little bit of a, a bump in them. So I, I repositioned it and set some glue uh, using the micro gluing technique and then use these two paint bottles to sort of flatten everything out. And you can notice there's still a little bit of a bow to it, but it's much less than it was. And this is what we're getting. So, I mean, it's making, it's making progress. And we'll go ahead and add that third piece, and then we're going to flatten this all out, and we're going to let it sit overnight so that we get rid of that sort of seesaw that we have there. Uh, we want this thing to sit nice and flat because... Once again, that's what it would look like in real life. So, But you'll notice that the gluing technique that I was using it has, has worked. Um, this is probably, you know, 10 minutes after it's been glued and it's still, you know, it's it's ready to go. So um, we'll move on to the next step here. I'll, I'll glue this last piece in and then uh, on to the next uh, step. So our cab has, uh, has dried here and you'll notice that the windows are covered over. It's just a bit of flash from the mold making process. With a sharp knife, you can remove this and open up the, the cab. Just go in there and get everything cleared out. Make sure it's all straightened. Touch up the paint if you need to. And then we'll, uh, we'll repeat this on all of the windows and get ready for this to be assembled. Okay, so I decided I'm not gonna glue the cab on the place because if I ever decide to animate this and put lights on it, which I definitely am going to do. Uh, it'll be easier to, to run the lights through if this is not glued. So then at that point I can just poke the hole through here, poke the hole through here, run the wires out the bottom, uh, and, and that'll be a lot easier if this isn't glued in place. So it fits nice. It fits where it's supposed to. So I don't see any need to, to glue it in place to hold it as, as a matter of function. Um, so I'm just going to leave it, leave it loose. If you've got the kit and you're either going to animate it and you have the lights, then you can go on to that step. If you don't have the lights, but you, you know, you might want to add them at some point, um, you can, you can do what I'm doing or, or you could just glue it on and say to hell with it. Um, that's as far as I'm going to go. So choices are yours. Uh, at this point you, you know, decide which way you want to go. It'll just make it easier on yourself. Okay. So we have our fire truck assembled. We have our steel doors, which did receive a dull coat, closed on one side, opened on the other, and that's how we're gonna how we're gonna leave it. And we have our ladder assembly put together, but now it's time to attach it to the truck itself. And there are some small pieces here that need to get cut out, and these are all railings, so. They go together just like that. And what I'm going to do is use the same method I did for applying the ladder. Use a very small piece of wire and some glue. And we're going to go ahead and cut these pieces free and then glue them together. Okay, so I know a lot of these steps I haven't really been showing you because, well, they are pretty simple standard construction. But this one I thought would be worth showing you because... Uh, it's an option. And, and so here's how this assembly goes together. This piece right here holds your aerial ladder. It slides in like so and gets glued in. Okay. This piece then nests in here. And you can see that there are small little cutouts where these pins will sit. Okay. And then there are some much smaller pieces right here. And these sit right over the top here. Now, you can glue this all in place and it will put your bucket, your ladder in whatever position that you glue it in. 
But if you glue this on here and you don't glue the pin right here, then you'll have movement. Now, the movement's no good because your ladder will be heavy and it'll obviously always lay on the ground. But in my case, because I don't exactly know where I'm putting this truck yet, I don't want to affix this because I don't know how my ladder will be angled. I don't know where my truck will be sitting. And so I don't want to lose the ability to put it into a position. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to glue this larger piece to the base. I'm just going to glue the small pieces right here to hold them in place. That'll give me movement. And then I'll show you later how we're going to fix that so that in the future we can always have movement. Okay. So now that we have our piece assembled, you can see what I'm talking about. This is free moving inside. There's two pieces we just glued on. Our ladder will rest in here. And then this piece will rest inside the truck like this. Now, I'm sure you've already guessed that, well, this is a moving piece too that lets the truck rotate. So chances are we are probably not going to glue this into place. So there are some platforms to go around here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to build those in just a second. Okay, our next step is some more of these etch metal pieces. And they are top pieces. They fit around where the ladder attaches. And then along the top here, they are to represent steel grating and walkway. So we're going to cut those free. We're going to install them right here. There are very clear instructions on where they go. You can see them there, but they actually in the other piece here... Uh, they do show you where all the little odds and ends go. So we're going to go ahead and get those assembled so they look just like that. So here's a neat little thing that the pieces are on the sprue in the order in which they go on the truck. So if you orient the, uh, the sprue correctly, then your pieces for the truck are already lined up and you pretty much just have to cut them out and then, you know, do what I'm doing, fishing them across the, uh, across the mat here. But uh, it'll, it'll save you some time and sort of takes the thinking out of it. So if you orient your sprue correctly, this becomes a real easy task. And as you can see, the pieces fit nice and snug. And there's no, uh, there's no real secret to this. I'm just applying a small amount of glue in each of these areas. I'm not using the micro gluing technique. It's not really required here. I'm just putting a small amount in. This is under the guise of uh, less is more because you don't want anything to ooze out. And so like, I think this might be a little bit too much glue there. We might have a little bit of oozing, which is really bad on these etched parts because what ends up happening is you get glue that doesn't really come out and it's just a uh, pain in try to clean up so use less glue and you can always go back and add more if something doesn't stick but I, I find when I'm building these kits uh, I, I try to limit the amount of glue that I use if you put too much paint on you may notice that your pieces don't fit and if you don't have your pieces cleaned up all the way there's a little bit of metal right there I'm gonna knock that off with a Number 11 blade, the metal is soft, it does cut easy. Once again, be very careful when you do that because if you bend the piece or crinkle the metal piece, then it doesn't really straighten back out. So you're sort of stuck with whatever shape you bend it into. And chances are it is not gonna be a realistic shape. So you can always use a metal file, but I find that on these smaller flimsier pieces, uh, a metal file is not really a good option because it, it it's, too, it's too aggressive. For, for the piece that you're putting on so and then our last little piece here we're just gonna once again we're just using a Gorilla Glue this is a gel version but as long as your Gorilla Glue is compatible with metal you should be just fine and then we're going to set this to dry but as you can see our fire truck is starting to come together here and all the pieces are starting to look like, uh, like a real fire truck. So that's what we're that's what we're looking for. The next piece I'm going to cut out here is for this 
back area where the ladder attaches. Our ladder is drying off onto the side here, and that is exactly what we're looking for. As soon as that's done, I can finish that assembly. When you read the instructions for these kits and for other kits, you'll notice that they usually, like for the building kits, they give you a, uh, a series of instructions to follow, basically. And I highly recommend on building kits that you follow those if you're trying to build the kit as it's you know as it is and it's not you're not trying to kit bash or anything but it, these vehicles they have a little more options a little more leeway so i tend to build them more in uh, assemblies and that's based on how i'm going to paint them and how much of them i can work on at one time and, and other items like that so take a look at them and don't necessarily have to do step one and then wait for step one to be done then go do step two and then wait for you know, step two to be done you can sort of keep moving as you're as you're going and so one thing that i was thinking about this looks like i just forgot to put the doors on right it, it, they don't look open they just look missing so i'm thinking maybe uh what i'm going to do is cut some of the doors in half to simulate that they're opened and i want to see what that looks like just just to test fit it so I'm going to cut some of these metal pieces down to size here and then let's see what we uh, let's see what we get. Okay, so here is the end result of the doors. And what I did is obviously the doors are open and you'll notice that I bent the tops just a bit. So what's going to happen is these doors actually roll up, right? So at the very very top of the roll up, you are going to see just a tiny tiny little bit of the roll where the door tucks back in on itself uh, underneath the truck. And you, that crease is going to be noticeable on the side. So I represented that. And all I did was, you know, I cut away the piece I wasn't going to use. And then using a pair of pliers, I just sort of gently bent the end. And then with a little bit of Gorilla Glue, attached it right to the top there. So um, it wasn't, uh, I'm happy with the way that looks. It looks like the doors have been rolled up and they're opened and firefighters are grabbing out the parts and pieces they need so i'm going to leave that just the way i have it there i think one thing that i should point out is these doors do have a top and a bottom so there is a it's a very small detail but it's a latching detail and a handle detail and you want to make sure the piece that you glue in place if you decide to do something like this is the bottom part because the bottom part of the doors is going to be what you're going to see you know last before it rolls all the way up so Make sure you keep the bottom part of the door and the top part is the part you cut away. All right, so uh, I glued in this control panel. I just missed it earlier. And on the other side of the truck, it's actually closed over. So on this side, now that it's exposed, we're going to have to get some paint in there. I'm not really excited about that because I'm going to go start working on the ladder detail. And so I have my ladder and it is glued to the base. And as you can see, that is still free moving and this is kind of giving you an idea of you know fully assembled right okay so that's kind of what we're working on there but there's a bunch of platforms and ladders and things that go around here that's what we're going to glue on next they are right here once again i'm not going to show you this step because quite frankly it is legitimately just following the instructions that are on here i'm not doing anything crazy i'm going to cut this out of here the railings are here and then they just glue on according to the instructions the details that come with this particular kit are fairly decent, so they sh you shouldn't have any issues you know, following the instructions of putting that together. So that is what we are doing now. Okay, I am getting ready to start detailing this baby up. So I have removed the cab and masked it off. And right now we are going to spray paint the top of this thing white. And then we're going to take the body and we're going to do some stripes on the body of the truck as well. So uh, stay tuned. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, since we last tuned in here, um, I went off and did a lot of the detail painting. So we were masking off for the white stripe here, which we did. And then I uh, went back and painted this. And basically, I left it alone. I painted a little bit silver. I tried to add some color into some of the controls, but I otherwise left it alone. And uh, glued on this this little piece here. Now I will tell you, this is you know on the uh, 
do as I say, not as I do part. I have put these handrails on and they sit on the back here. I, they kept getting knocked off, so I let them sit aside because we're just, it just wasn't worth fighting them and they kept getting in the way. As I tried to repaint the vehicle, uh, read to the tires. Uh, I like to paint the tires a grimy black, so it's a Model Masters uh, paint. There it is right there. And uh, grimy flat black is the one you want to use. It looks really good for the tire fronts. Now I left the underside and behind black to, to force that perspective, force that shadow. And then, of course, I glued on the outriggers, painted them orange. Nothing fancy there. That's just an old poly scale. Uh, I think this is a GN orange. It has been around for a while. Um, touched everything up, of course, with our stoplight red metallic. That's the enamel paint. And then the white was just simply a Model Masters white. The silver I was using was a tester's gloss enamel, so it gives it that nice shine. You'll notice that I put the front bumper on, and that is, um, yeah, put the front bumper on and apparently knocked it off too. I have to reset that. Um, uh, actually, it was just the cab. Perfect. It was just the cab. So the front bumper's on, and uh, also put in the small uh, etch metal pieces here on, on the handrails. Uh, handrails, the, the foot footsteps. So those are all on. Now, one thing that I did want to do, and I wasn't really sure how it was going to work out, but there is a lot of detail here in these metal doors. Now, I, the whole purpose of this was to keep those metal doors shiny, right? But I wanted to call out some of the detail on there. So what I did is I took the Tamiya panel accent color. This is real popular with the shipbuilders and some of the military guys, but it's finding its own little niche in the model train world as well. And what this stuff does is it flows really, really well. So I was touching all of the panel liners and you notice when you don't have a lot on the brush, it just kind of flows right into the joints there and you can see how it's flowing out and it accents all of those little ribs on the door sort of gives the brings the detail out a little bit and what i was doing was i was bringing out the accent color of those doors which dulled the color a little bit so then i went back with a paper towel and simply removed as much of that as i could so the only stuff that was left was what was sitting down in the in the grooves to bring out the panel depth. I think it looks better that way, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Then I said, well, you know what? We've got some detail that's carved into the, molded into the model here. What if I did the same thing? And so I took it on the other side, and I just touched the truck and sort of brought that material around. Let it sink into all the grooves, kind of highlight all those little tiny details that you can see, but now you can see better. Once again, I'm losing my my bright shine that I want, so I went back in with a paper towel, cleaned up most of the excess, and ended up with just a little bit highlighting the lower points Give me some some detail there so i use that to bring out the detail i liked it uh it may not be something that you want to do but um like i said i, I like the way it looked so um did that on both sides and now we're ready for the next step okay so now here we are completed build and let's take you through a quick tour of everything that was done and show you the final end results so the last thing I did here was I painted the end of the ladder red and the hose on the edge there, if it'll focus, and just painted that silver. They provide you some decals. Um, they are cut out glue on decals and they do, uh, as long as you take your time, trim them out nice, they look good on the truck. So we'll leave that there. I glued on the finer details. The air conditioning fans, they are a separate applied piece uh, to glue them on so that I didn't get glue in the fan detail itself. See that little piece of metal between the two of them? Yeah, that's where it's glued. Put the mirrors on both sides of the truck. 
and then put the grab bars on the side and then again on the back of the truck and like i said those those are all separately applied details so if you don't um wait till the end you, you're just gonna end up knocking them off so just wait till the end also apply the light bar i wasn't real excited about the light bar because obviously it's static um i am going to add a real light bar on there so that you can uh, so the truck will light up and that is our, our, our final product um thoughts on this model is once again it's it's great this is a showcase miniatures piece a lot of great details separately applied uh if you take your time and you build it you know correctly it does look really nice i do have 100 percent rotation in the boom right now because i haven't glued it in place and of course the boom goes up and down they do give you a small piece of metal that you can make the hydraulics for to hold this in place so once i determine what that position is going to be uh, i'll go ahead and apply that the kit is a difficult build the build time itself was probably about oh i'm going to say six to seven hours of actual building and painting and there's probably you know there's a handful of hours in between there so this is a weekend project um, if you're dedicated to it and nothing else uh, there's a few things that i need to touch up right now everything's kind of wet so i'm letting it dry so obviously i need to clean up here a little bit in the front and clean up my paint line there not a, not a huge deal uh, i just don't want to do it while i've got uh, everything's wet so i'm gonna let that dry and then uh you know my thoughts on this kit are you know not only is it a great kit uh, i highly recommend the showcase miniature stuff just the detail is great but it's not something that if you're just jumping into the hobby or just jumping into end scale you're going to want to take on first it's a fairly complicated model in that there are so many small pieces the directions are really good they're really clear so you know it's it's worth a shot but i used three sets of tweezers to put this together um and i had a army of very small very pointy brushes that i was using you can see most of them right there to get to get this thing painted so there's a lot of detail and to bring it all out and to do it right you gotta you really have to paint it um almost piece by piece so i did a lot of the painting before i assembled it other than you know obviously the uh, initial part that i spray painted which um I showed you earlier in the video and then of course here's the other side with the with the doors closed so highly recommend this model take your time and happy modeling